Uh, let's look at uh, a stochastic process being applied to a linear time invariant system. So a stochastic process is a collection of waveforms, each waveform. A linear time invariant system of course is characterized by its response to an impulse. The impulse uh, response of the system is generally we denote it by H of T, it's a waveform. It is what it is, it characterizes the system. So you hit it with the impulse, what comes out is the impulse response. Interesting thing is for linear time invariant systems, uh, the, uh, if you excite it with any other waveform, the output is going to be, can, can be expressed in terms of the impulse response and the input. So this is the convolution operation, uh, which is integral x of t minus tau h of tau d tau. So we want to perceive if suppose the input is wide substationary, what can you say about the output? So first of all, let's look at the mean and the autocorrelation properties of the output. So expected value of y of t from here uh, is <coughs> expected value of x of uh, t minus uh, tau h of tau or d tau. So this is mu x of uh, t minus tau so minus infinity to plus infinity h of tau d tau. So notice that it's another convolution. So you can say the output mean is the input mean convolved with h of t. And now let's look at the cross correlation function rxy t1 gamma t2. So this is expected value of x t1 multiplied by y t2 star. And so I'm going to write it here rxy t1 gamma t2 is uh, expected value of uh, x t1 multiplied by y t2, y t2 is of course x of t2 minus alpha h alpha d alpha for the star of the second variable. Uh, so this of course can be written as integral expected value of x t1 uh, x of t2 minus alpha <coughs> h star alpha or d alpha. But this is the autocorrelation function of the input. So this is minus infinity to plus infinity r x x t1 comma t2 minus alpha h star alpha d alpha. So we could write this as r x x uh, t1 uh, comma t2 but convolve. So the convolution is on the second variable. So this is the cross correlation function between input and output. So finally the output autocorrelation function. So we will deal with the Whitesun stationarity in a minute. So this is expected value of yt1, yt2. So if I plug it in for yt1, integral x of t1 minus beta h beta d beta multiplied by y star t2. And the collective term, so this is expected value of x t1 minus beta multiplied by y star t2 multiplied by h beta d beta. But this is nothing but the integral of rxy uh, t1 minus beta comma t2 h beta d beta. But that's, that if you want, we can write this as rxy uh, t1 comma t2 convolved on the first variable h1. Right, because the convolution is on the first variable. So if you want, we can uh, express these results in this symbol block diagram. Uh, so mu x t1 h of t or mu y t. This is the relation between the means and the input autocorrelation function is convolved with h star of t2 to get the cross correlation function. That's expression number two. 
and that's actually involved with h of t1 to generate the output of the flow. So I just uh, put it uh, in a picture what we have derived. Uh, now let's suppose say x of t is void some state. That means uh, mu x of t is a constant mu. And then if you come, if you come, if you put it into this equation, <coughs> this means the output y of t would be minus infinity plus infinity. Uh, the con uh, x, mu x multiplied by h of tau d tau. But this is another constant, so this would be mu x multiplied by h of tau. So the output mean is also a constant. And the cross correlation function rxy, we could do it simply here. So if x of t is a constant, this will become uh, minus. So this will be t1 minus t2 plus. So now you have an expression from here you have r x y t1 comma t2 is minus infinity to plus infinity. Let me call t1 minus t2 to be tau. So you have r x x tau plus alpha multiplied by x star alpha d alpha. But this is of course r x x tau convolved with x star of minus tau. Because if you do this convolution, you'll get exactly this relation. And finally, also that means that x and y are, uh, now look at the right side, it only depends on tau. So we could conclude that this is also a function of only tau. That means x and y are jointly white and stationary at this point. Now if you look at r y y tau, it's here, it's uh, this expression. So this expression will become, this will become t1 minus t2. So this now reads r y y t1 comma t2 now reads integral from here r x y. But t1 minus t2 is tau, so tau minus beta h beta or d beta. But this is now convolution of r x y tau uh, with uh, h of tau. So once again on the right side you only see tau, so the left side must be tau. So we conclude that a y of t is also white and stationary. And if we can put all the results together saying that r y y tau is r x y tau, <coughs> which is r x x tau convolved with h of h star of minus tau convolved with h of tau. So this is a system property. If you call this to be row of tau, then R <coughs> y y tau is R x x tau convolved with a row of tau, where row of tau is h star of minus tau convolved with h of tau. So the bottom line is, if uh, x of t is white and stationary, uh, then uh, y of t is also white and stationary because we just showed that. The mean is a constant somewhere here and the cross correlation function only depends on tau and the output auto correlation function also depends only on tau. Tau is t1 minus where tau is t1 minus t2. So consequently the process is uh, white and stationary because the auto correlation function, output auto correlation function and the cross correlation function depends only on the difference of time indices T1 and T2.